The Airbus A220 is an exciting passenger aircraft, and in this video, I flew with Delta in one of their A220s all the way from Boston to Dallas-Fort Worth. The Airbus A220 boasts modern comfort, but does it compare to larger aircraft flying similar routes? In this video, I'll share my full experience, from check-in, to boarding, the flight, and the service. Stay tuned. My journey began at Boston Logan Airport. Check-in was quick and easy, as I had checked in online through the Delta app the night before. Dropping off a checked bag was as simple as showing my passport at the bag drop-off counter. In no time, I was already in the security line, which was located right next to the Delta check-in counter. After a quick and easy security, I was in. As I had about an hour until my flight, I took some time looking around the terminal, Terminal A. Before I go any further, if you continue to enjoy this video, consider subscribing. I have another flight review planned soon, flying in a rare quad jet internationally, so you don't want to miss it. After touring the terminal, I headed to my gate. Not long afterwards, we were ready for boarding. As I had purchased a Delta basic fare, I boarded with main group two, towards the end of the boarding process. After heading over the jet bridge, I made my way into the Airbus A220-100 we would be flying. The A220 we flew on was configured with 12 first class seats with extra width and legroom, and 15 Delta Comfort Plus seats with extra legroom, 34 inches to be precise. Where I was sitting in regular economy seat 28E, I had 18.6 inches of width and 32 inches of legroom. While the amount of legroom was pretty standard, a bit of extra width felt nice. After getting settled, I took an opportunity to look out of the window. We soon pushed back and taxied across the airport. After taxiing for a good while, we were ready for takeoff. The takeoff was the quickest and steepest I have ever experienced. The A220 really felt overpowered. It makes sense given that the A220 is able to accomplish some of the shortest and steepest takeoffs in the whole of the commercial aircraft industry. With such an exhilarating takeoff, we were soon soaring over Boston, and then the greater New England. Soon after the seatbelt sign came off, we were given headphones, and then an option for a complimentary drink and snack. I chose coffee and Delta's famous cookies, along with a Sprite and a granola bar. After a bit of turbulence, I got to take a better look at my surroundings. I was happy to see a universal power plug right in front of me. And while Wi-Fi with Delta isn't free, my plan with T-Mobile gave me free unlimited Wi-Fi during the whole trip. It was a pleasant surprise. 
Soon afterwards, I decided to try out the in-flight entertainment system. Delta provides a screen at every seat in this particular aircraft, and Delta's software seemed clean, simple, but with plentiful options. Their live map feature was alright, but I much preferred the live map I experienced on my latest flight with JetBlue. After looking through the IFE system, I sat back and enjoyed the setting sun. About an hour before landing, the Delta crew offered a fitting snack to a stunning backdrop. Sun chips, and of course, some water to keep hydrated. I didn't have long, however, as our flight was quickly descending into North Texas. Unfortunately, my landing time-lapse footage cut out but my experience with Delta's A220 economy class was not hindered. My experience was superb. Not only did the aircraft feel fun to fly in, the modern features, lighting, and cabin altitude made this a truly comfortable flight. The A220 is really a masterpiece, both for airlines and for passengers like you and I, but I can't help but think that Delta's amazing crew and service made this flight much more enjoyable. Enough talking though, in no time we had landed, and we were ready to disembark. In true Delta fashion, the lead flight attendant pranked us all by saying that we had landed at Dallas Love Field. Maybe the prank got some, but there was no way I could be fooled. I know how downtown Dallas looks, even in the dark. I can't say how much I enjoyed this flight. As I walked on the jet bridge, I realized that this service in personal space would have been fully acceptable on even an 11 hour flight. It makes me think of the possibility of an A220 XLR. But enough of hypotheticals. I absolutely recommend flying in Delta's A220. If you're tall like me, you might want to look into getting an upgrade to Comfort Plus. The upgrade would have costed me about an extra 70 bucks. For this flight, however, the legroom was doable. If it was much longer, maybe for me, an upgrade would have been worth it. If you enjoyed this review, please consider giving this video a like. It's the easiest way to show your appreciation. Also, I wanted to let all of y'all know of a new opportunity to support creation of content like this and get a shout out at the end of each video. If you'd like an upgrade in content perks, including a shout out at the end of each video like I just mentioned, consider becoming a channel member, starting at just 99 cents. Once again, another great international flight review is in the works. So if you're interested, consider subscribing. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next.